What is better than a hard shell case to hold your handgun? How about a case to hold four of your handguns? What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we're taking a look at the Seahorse 4 pistol hard shell case. I just flew back from Pennsylvania to Miami with this case completely loaded out so I'll go over some of the specs and features of this case as well as give you a rundown of how flying with guns for the first time went for me. I'm gonna preface this right up front. I am not a lawyer. I'm not here to give legal advice. I'm just a guy on YouTube so I'm gonna give you my personal opinion on flying with this thing, things you should do and should not do, but take it with a grain of salt. Now let's get into this thing, literally. This is the Seahorse Model SE630 four pistol hard shell case. It currently comes in three different colorways, black that you're looking at right here, as well as desert tan and forest green. It has outside dimensions at about 17 and a half by 14 by seven and a half, and inside dimensions at 16 by 11 and a half by six and a quarter. It weighs about seven pounds empty, and when you load this thing up, it can definitely weigh a lot more than that, depending on what type of firearms you put in this thing. There are two different options for the latches, standard plastic like you see here, or there's also a metal key lock option for about $20 more. This thing is watertight, has two padlock holes, and is constructed out of polypropylene co-polymer. In layman's terms, in my opinion, this thing is really high quality and built like a rock. On the inside, there's high performance foam inserts that hold four semi-automatic handguns up to the size of a 1911, as well as 12 magazines and a little additional space in the center for ammunition. The foam is relatively stiff, durable, and it will resist cleaners and lubricants used in gun maintenance. And then one more main kicker that I always like, this thing is completely made in the USA. The handle on the top here does have retention so that once you press it all the way down against the body of the case, it'll stay down like that and if it's shaking around in a bag or if you're just flying with this solo, it shouldn't move around and get broken off in any way. The standard latch option that I chose worked just like this. Simply turn these two knobs to unlock, pop the latches up, and you're in. The way I currently have this thing laid out, I have my Gen 4 Glock 19, Gen 5 Glock 19, my CZ P07 Tactical, as well as my HK USP 9 Tactical. In the center, I have an AR lower that I'm currently working on building, as well as a spare magazine. Then I have six Glock magazines, one of them being a dry fire mag, two mags for the CZ, two for the HK, and I have two more pockets open. I also took a few of the patches that I picked up at SHOT Show and threw them in here. The way this case comes, this foam insert is actually turned around the other way. You can actually buy this case with or without the foam inserts. On this side is just the eggshell. You could rock the case just like this as it comes. However, I thought this added a little cool factor to it. Now let me bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can see the fitment of the foam. Here's the case completely unloaded and as you can see, the foam is laser cut to fit pretty much any type of semi-automatic handgun. There's a deep pocket all the way to the bottom to fit the longer grips like on a Glock 17. It gets a little more narrow in here to basically pinch the trigger guard. That's nice to have if you're carrying any smaller single stack guns. The rest of the gun, the bottom of the frame and slide will get pinched right up here. And surprisingly, the retention is pretty good on any gun that I've put in here so far. Here is one of the biggest guns that I brought down with me, the USP Tactical. As you can see, slips right in here, give a little bit of pressure to pinch in the trigger guard, and that thing is in there, threaded barrel and all. Two magazines, slip these right behind it to keep everything organized, and that's pretty much it. Same thing with the CZ, threaded barrel fits no problem. Standard mag and plus two mag. And then over on this side, I will throw in my Gen 5 19, my Gen 4 19 with the RMR on top, and then all of the mags that go along with it. Here's a look at the perspective from the top of the case. As you can see, some of these guns are bigger and stick up, especially this RMR over here. And then even with this foam insert flipped around and all of these patches on here, it still closes. No problem. Here I'll give you an idea of the retention on this thing. I would not do this with a case that I wouldn't trust. Got four relatively expensive handguns loaded up in here. I'd say that is pretty good. So this is a really dope case, especially in my situation. Not only is this good for traveling, but it's good for just taking to the range. As you guys probably know, I've done behind the scenes on how I film Sunday gun day videos. I'm constantly taking different firearms with me to the range. This makes my life a lot easier. When I'm headed out to the range, I basically just open up my safe, 
pick out what I want, line everything up, make sure I have all the mags. I can throw any ammunition or ears in the middle here, close it up and I'm ready to go all in one case. Now you might look at this case and go, ooh, that looks pretty high quality, top notch, and I know there are expensive cases out there. Huge plus side of this Seahorse case is that it's only about a hundred bucks. You get a case with the ability to hold four handguns, 12 magazines, 16 if there are magazines in the gun, TSA approved all for a hundred bucks, you can't really beat that. This thing is just really rugged and versatile, so if you're in the market for a gun case, I definitely recommend checking out Seahorse cases. Now I wanna go over real quick how it was flying with this thing. I flew out of Philadelphia Airport directly into Miami International. I had it in this exact condition right here, also with the center loaded up with the AR lower and other AR parts. No ammunition in the case, I also had the slides locked back just in case TSA wanted to open up and make sure that there were no loaded guns in it. I had this thing closed up, locked this way on both latches, and then I had these two small master lock combo locks, both with different combinations on each one. The two padlock points are right up front in the corners. Slip these things on. These are not TSA approved, meaning that TSA should not be able to open these very easily. That's something that you want to look for when you're buying locks to lock a gun case when you're flying. And that's pretty much it. The reason that you don't want to use TSA approved locks is pretty obvious. They're designed to be open very easily. I was actually flying with this thing from here back to Philly inside of a bigger suitcase and TSA cut the lock off the outside of my suitcase for some reason. I did have some charging handles, a buffer spring, a buffer, a couple triggers safety selectors, things like that in here, but nothing actually registered as a firearm. This was the only thing in that big suitcase. It wasn't locked at the time, so I'm not sure why they went in there, but I guess they're just doing their job, so I can't really be mad about that. Now, when flying back with this case loaded, it actually went pretty smoothly. Went into the airport, checked in, got a tag for my bag, went to drop it off at the counter, and as soon as I got there, handed my boarding pass, my ID, and I said, there are firearms in this bag. The lady at the counter said, okay, give me one second. She came back with these two tags, and asked, is there any ammo in there with the guns? Is everything unloaded and safe? I said, yes, of course, it's in a hard case, it's locked up and I can pull it out and show you if you want. She was like, no, that's fine. If you're lying to me, they're obviously gonna find out when they go back and check the bag. So she handed me this card and on the back is basically a little declaration. It says, I understand that federal regulations prohibit loaded firearms in both check baggage and carry on on my flights. I therefore declare that the firearms contained in my check bag are not loaded, will be locked in a hard sided container and that I will retain the key or combination at all times. I further declare that the ammunition is separate from the firearms, secured in an ammo box or container as required, and there's no loose ammunition within the bag. They put your flight number on there, you sign it, and then you have to wait around just a little bit. They took my bag into the back room, probably opened it up, inspected it. I'm not exactly sure what was going on. They came out about five, ten minutes later and told me I was good to go to my gate. When I landed, I went to the baggage claim, and this actually says return to BSO, which I'm assuming means bag security officer, bag security office, something like that. So instead of waiting at the carousel where everyone else waits, the bag actually came separately to the stand where you have to go and actually talk to someone. I said, hey, that's my bag. They asked me my name, my ID, got the bag no problems at all. When I got out to the car, I did open the bag and make sure that the locks were still on here. Everything was good. I also peeked inside just to make sure that they didn't open these up somehow and then put them back on. It would obviously be a very serious offense if someone went into this case and stole something out of it. Even if it's a TSA officer, that would escalate very, very quickly. You'd have to get law enforcement involved. It would not be very fun. So definitely make sure that you have the combinations or the keys to these locks and no one else can get inside of it. So that's a basic rundown of how I flew with this seahorse case. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a dude giving you my experiences, letting you know how I did it. And maybe, hopefully, it shed a little bit of light if you are considering flying with firearms in the future. If you have any questions or comments about this case, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I want to give a big thanks to Annie at Seahorse Cases for hooking me up with this thing. And also, thank you guys for watching. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. And that's going to be all for today. So, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.